Hello, 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 and welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today we are out at the shop working on a uh, something kind of different. Uh, this is a customer car that got dropped off earlier today. It is a turbocharged Honda CRV. It has a GSR engine with a uh, supposed built head and a stock bottom end. So it has a set of like stage two camshafts, he says. I'm not exactly sure what cams are in it. Uh, and some valve train I'm assuming and he got a turbo kit for it and tried to kind of get everything situated on the car here and uh, You know ran into some headaches along the way and said screw it I'm just gonna drop it off to somebody that knows what they're doing and uh, You know try to ease some of the stress on him So he brought it over and I'm gonna try to finish it up for him. So um, Yeah, like I said, this is a GSR motor with a VS racing 3076 size turbo it's got a ram horn manifold and a tile wastegate. I think this setup was actually on the brown Integra that I did on the channel here and this guy bought the turbo kit from him. So yeah. So the car doesn't have a downpipe currently. He gave me the flange uh, for it and the clamp so I'm going to have to uh, work out a something for a downpipe I have to make for it. And then um, the intercooler piping needs to be situated a little bit better because currently the piping uh, runs underneath the car there and uh, definitely not the best way to go about it. So I'm going to be deleting the washer tank and uh, trimming this inner fender well right here so the piping can actually sit up so the bumper can actually go back on it. And uh, yeah, so other little things that it's going to need, it needs like oil lines. It has, uh, you know, some oil leak or something and they ran the uh, oil feed line underneath the pan so if you guys look under here the oil feed line is actually running underneath the uh, motor so we're gonna have to situate that it's got a couple oil leaks I don't know where they're coming from so and the return line is definitely kinked so they have to uh, I'm gonna have to redo the return line and the feed line on it as well as make a downpipe redo the intercooler piping there um, they have an oil catch can on the car here that's not hooked up properly so uh, currently they have the line coming off the manifold here, which uh, is going to be boost pressure now because the car has a turbocharger. So this doesn't work when you uh, run the catch can into a vacuum source because the boost will actually go into the catch can and then back into the PCV where the bottom of the bottom hose of the catch can is going to. So uh, that would actually cause more crankcase pressure, which is the exact opposite of what the catch can is supposed to do. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this clamp off of here and I'm actually going to run this hose just straight to the top of the valve cover where they have this breather port and that should work out for the catch can. Um, going to have to put some injectors in it. He actually is buying a set of the Hunter tuned uh, 750 cc injectors the normal truck injectors we're gonna throw those in here um, and then yeah so just a bunch of little things that I got to do on it uh, it's kind of cool though it's a CRV so don't really see turbocharged VTEC CRVs often uh, also it doesn't have a lot of manifold studs on it currently so it only has four bolts holding the manifold on it's got one here two in the middle and then one on the outside down there so we're gonna have to get some bolts uh, on the exhaust manifold to hold that sucker on there. The wide band is kind of just chilling underneath the car right now. He has a wide band um, hooked up into here, I think. They do have a max solenoid on the car as well. So I gotta make sure that the plumbing on this is proper and make sure that this is gonna be all good to go. So I'll have to double check some of the plumbing and the wiring on this to make sure the, the solenoid and everything is gonna work, which uh, the boost by gear stuff probably won't even be needed on this thing, considering A, it's all wheel drive, B, it's a pig, it weighs a lot, <laughs> and um, yeah, and it's a stock bottom end. So um, I, would, I would just throw all the boost at it all the time with being all wheel drive and being uh, you know heavy. A heavy vehicle you really could you could throw all the power at it whenever you want it it'd be pretty hard to blow all four off on the concrete so um the max solenoid thing might not be a good idea for this i mean it's cool to have it uh but it's definitely probably not needed on this setup but we will see if we can get it all working and do all that kind of stuff but uh like i said the wide band is sitting inside of this thing and they have some gauges in it it looks like they have a boost gauge and a uh air fuel there so we got to make sure that the gauges and everything are going to work. The sensor is just dangling underneath the car, so we have to situate that. It is covered in oil too, so that's like another thing that we got to look out for is the wideband sensors. A lot of times if you get them full of gas or oil or anything like that, uh, the sensors do go out fairly easily. So you got to treat the sensors with care um, if you don't want to be spending a bunch of money on sensors. 
So I did actually come out here earlier and I was messing with my truck a little bit. So I got the Yee Yee Mobile. Uh, this thing has just been fucking amazing to me. Uh, we did a little series on this thing. If you guys haven't checked it out, it's my daily driver 2500 Silverado. Uh, it's got six liter and a 4L 80E transmission. I've put 15,000 miles on this truck turbocharged so far. 14 pounds of boost, ethanol, decapped injectors from Hunter Tuned. Uh, all, all that stuff's on my website. It's got a 66 uh, S366 uh, turbo on it, uh, billet wheel. And uh, man, this thing is just a lot of fun and uh, definitely is just like my fucking work truck with turbo noises and E85. I switched it back over to ethanol today because the weather here has been just gorgeous. It's like 50 out today. The rest of the week's supposed to be really nice out too. So we're not even really using heat in the shop right now. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but we just got a bunch of trash back here. We've been out at the shop just thrashing the last like week or so. So we've collected some junk and garbage. There's no dumpster out here, so it kind of sucks. We gotta take the stuff into town, uh, into the landfill, and kind of get rid of our garbage that way. But not a big deal. Finally got some walkway area uh, shoveled out here because a lot of this was frozen over ice and snow and all that stuff. And we finally have enough warm temperatures where a lot of the snow is melting and I was able to clear some walkways here at the shop. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the last video we did rearrange the cars in here a little bit. So um, I do have my Mustang over on, uh, all the cars are kind of facing this way because when the cars are facing this way, we can still kind of work on them and not be crowded. When the Hondas were parked, you know, parallel going this way into the wall with the, uh, you know, that wall with the trunks of the car facing that wall. Um, it was a little bit crowded. There was no way I'd be able to get in between like taking wheels off or anything like that. So I rearranged the cars this way uh, in order to be able to work on every single car at the same time. So I'll be able to work on the hatch, the Mustang, the CRX, have a customer car in here and have Michael's car at the same time. I'm just kind of, uh, you know, well, we, we can consolidate enough space here to accommodate uh, cars and whatnot. So, and worst case scenario, if I do get a bunch of customer work coming in, we can always move some of the cars outside. And uh, we do have a parking lot here. It's just, I think the landlord said he might charge me if I do park stuff overnight quite a bit. Um, but I might end up just parking stuff behind the shop because behind the shop, there's like a little driveway too uh, that we might be able to park stuff back there as well. So yeah, this thing's pretty sweet. He's got some big snow tires on it and some Jeep wheels. Um, it's pretty rad. He's got some racing seats in it as well. So uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm just gonna get after this thing and uh, start wrenching on it. So I'm gonna pull it all apart quick and uh, check out what we got going on. All right guys, so I have been working on the CRV and uh, we got a lot of stuff pulled off of the car here. I got the intercooler and some of the piping removed. I pulled off the manifold and turbo that's up on the workbench there and this is the wastegate that was on it and uh, I don't know if you guys can see that but there is a gap between the valve and the bottom of the gate here so the exhaust is able to flow right out of the dump tube there because the spring or something is bound up under the diaphragm here so if you would have ran this wastegate on there the turbo would have been really lazy and probably would not have made any boost so I gotta take apart the wastegate here and figure out what's going on with it and uh, see if we can get the, the valve to sit back down flat uh, how it's supposed to because it currently it is open. Um, it still has spring pressure to it, but it's open. Uh, like I said, an exhaust can flow right out of there. So it, it, it's gonna be a huge exhaust leak and it's not gonna have any uh, way to hold the boost into the turbo. So I also have been going through uh, checking out the oil lines and we have, I pulled the oil lines off of it and the sandwich plate and stuff off the back of the block because he was complaining of some oil leaks and all these fittings that were going into here didn't really have much sealant on them. So I'm going through and I'm resealing the sandwich plate here and it wasn't really even that tight on the back of the block. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is tightened down good and uh, no leaks from the back of the block area. And I had to pull all this off because he had to the oil, the feed line for the turbo was running underneath the oil pan and then back up. So that's not a good way to run them. You want to run them usually over the valve cover or, you know, on top of the engine. That way, uh, you know, you can make all this stuff work. I, I don't know why he did that. It may have been too short of an oil line uh, to reach the feed on the turbo here, but we'll see if anything, we'll get another uh, line I'll get another feed line for him, but uh, anyways, I wanted to go through and I just kind of checked out the turbo, cleaned it out, uh, resealed some of the stuff that's in here, and uh, yeah, so a lot of oil was, and stuff was in here, so I cleaned all this off, and uh, 
yeah so that's where i'm at right now had to drain the oil out of it to get all that stuff off and uh fix the catch can fitting so i ran that instead of on the intake manifold that's going to the valve cover now so shouldn't have any blow by issues with that i have to get some manifold bolts for it he said he had some but um i may just get some bolts because i pulled out all the studs besides the corner ones here um, I usually like to keep the corner studs in the head and then I run bolts on all the other ones because um, a lot of the nuts and stuff on the studs sometimes tend to back out in the bolts like a flanged head bolt works a lot better for like a turbo car because the turbo causes more vibration and stuff like that so that's what I like to do at least and I like to leave the two corner ones because it helps with aligning everything up when you put the turbo manifold onto the head so yeah i got the, uh, rid of the washer tank obviously and i trimmed the uh inner fender liner thingy trimmed that down so we can run the piping more normal uh so yeah now it's going to be just kind of throwing everything back together slowly i'm going to put the sandwich plate back on uh, and try to get all that stuff sealed back up run the feed line back up and yeah so this is another episode of Just Needs a Tune. All right guys, so I got the manifold back onto the car here and I have to replace a lot of these bolts. One of these is actually stripped in the head. So I'm going through and trying to get the manifold bolted onto the head properly here and with all the bolts so it doesn't come off. Um, and in the meantime, I don't have any bolts here so I gotta go run and get some. Um, I did run the feed line up here and we do have plenty of room so that's all good to go. But in the meantime, I figured I would take the wastegate apart and see what was wrong with it because the valve wasn't shutting all the way like I was saying earlier. So Michael uh, and me kind of tore off the top of the gate here. It's just got like a six pound spring in it probably. Uh, yeah, that feels like a six or something. We got any light over here? Probably not. You should put one in. Hang it right here on the French. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, so we took the gate apart, and this is the plate that sits on here. And as you guys can see, the diaphragm is really chewed up on this, so that's not a good sign. Um, you know, this sits in here and goes up and down with the valve. So the valve was, you know, goes up and down to allow the exhaust gas to escape. And this sits on top of here, like so. And then there's little set screws inside of here that hold it. Those set screws are gone. Like there's. Yeah, there's no set screws left in the diaphragm here. None whatsoever, no set screws there. So we have no way of attaching this. Plus the diaphragm's junk. Plus this screw right here was supposed to be right there and it was chilling right there. So that's why the valve wasn't able to actually close all the way because the diaphragm piece was actually hitting it and binding up. So the valve was hanging open. So there's that. What, what kind of wastegate is this? A knockoff. Yeah. Right it's got to be a knockoff or it has something. To, has to be. Yeah. Like I said, guys, I always run those E uh, or Speed Daddy wastegates. I never have problems like this. Um, or if you're worried about it, you take all the wastegate stuff apart before you even touch it or throw it on the car and you red lock tight everything so none of this happens. But Michael's just going to try to thread some of this stuff back in. I really don't know what we're going to do because this diaphragm is junk. So I might have to get a hold of them and see what he wants to do because this gate will not work well it might work we just got to get some screws for it alrighty guys quick update on the CRV it is the next day now and uh, I've been messing with the car for quite a while now just doing little odds and ends stuff kind of all day I've uh, been messing with it and trying to get everything squared away so I did get the wastegate fixed majority of it fixed uh, he's gonna need a new one but for now this one might be okay I'm just working with what I got here, but this gate, uh, I did get some new set screws for the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is sealing. I actually tested it with compressed air, made sure the valve was opening and closing without leaking, and the diaphragm is sealing, so uh, anyways, I did get new set screws inside of here. I tightened everything down, locked tighted everything, and pounded the set stud. There's a stud in here that the valve sits on, and it was actually pushed up a little bit, so the valve wasn't able to close all the way, and I got it to close the majority of the way but it still has a very 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 small exhaust leak probably just because it's a knockoff gate um you know whatever we're just working with what we got here so 
I uh, got the gate on, got all the new bolts into the manifold. I could not get the corners on the top here because uh, we don't have the hardware to be able to do that. And the way this manifold is set up, it needs like a really short stud or something with a nut. Um, it, it'll probably be fine without these these top ones here, but like I said, the way this manifold's designed, the runners come up really sharp right off of the head here, so it's hard to get a bolt on these corner top ones. Um, but I did get the oil feed line installed, and I ran the uh, feed line. So this is the oil feed line down here. I tightened it to the block with one of those rubber insulated clamps. I'm not talking to you, Michael, I'm talking to my camera. So um, I ran the feed line up. The feed line's kind of ghetto because uh, it just is an eBay one. So a uh, different feed line would probably be in his future too, but he's on a budget here and I'm literally dealing with a lot of stuff for not a lot of budget on this car. So uh, I'm really just trying to give him something rather than nothing kind of thing. So I'm doing all I can to get something going here for him. Um, but I redid the uh, return line going into the oil pan with a 45. So I have a 45 coming out of the oil pan down there, hooking up to the turbo. So now that the re now the return line is not kinked, it was kinked before. So that would have killed the turbo prematurely. Um, and then I got the piping starting to run now and I'm running it up so it doesn't hang below the oil pan anymore with the washer tank deleted. So I'm gonna mount the intercooler back up Oh, I also got a downpipe made for it. So this is just like a mandrel three inch bend right here. Um, the welds are not pretty because the V-band clamp flange that he gave me, um, he tried JB welding or the previous guy tried JB welding the exhaust. And let me just tell you guys that JB weld does not work for exhaust. Um, so I had to grind off the JB weld and there's still residue and shit on there and and the weld didn't, didn't really penetrate that good through the JB weld so the weld kind of doesn't look that great but uh, like I said we're doing with what we got here and you know we're going the extra mile because a lot of shops wouldn't do a lot of this stuff guys like they wouldn't go through a lot of shops really wouldn't go through the time and effort uh, if something wasn't perfect and the guy didn't have the money kind of thing they would just say come get your car you know pick it up kind of thing but that's not how I do business or at least how I try not I try not to do business like that um, also another huge shout out dude look at this banner that we picked up uh, we got this banner for the shop now it says where we do it all for less 608 garage so 608 garage is actually a guy I tuned his Del Sol a while ago on the channel here he's got a YouTube 608 garage obviously and he wanted to send his banner in to hang up at my shop so I got his banner hung up now looks fucking awesome brother honestly this banner looks sweet uh, so I'm super uh, happy to have this banner in my shop it would be cool honestly to get something like this for hunter tuned and have hunter tuned written right here where 608 garage was but um you know what i mean guys it, uh, this is really cool that we got another banner sent in to us so we're going to uh continue thrashing on this thing michael did some boost by gear stuff last night um yeah we've been just going going crazy out here trying to keep up with everything and I'm trying to keep up with all my messages and emails and text messages and everything from everybody. So, uh, yeah, it's been driving me up a wall, honestly. I've been going a little crazy uh, trying to keep up with everything. But uh, anyways, that's going to be it for this video, guys. The next video is going to be the CRV finally running. And uh, we're going to get everything tidied up. I'm just going to, you know, finish a couple things here off camera, mount the intercooler back up, get uh, everything situated again. Um, but this is a good little introductory for you guys uh, into the CRV project that we're working on. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will catch you in the next See one. See ya! Have a great night and a better tomorrow. Wow, nice sweatshirt. Honda, 1959. <laughs>